Welcome to Electron Line. Our next example is a little bit more complicated because it has two different voltage sources, one in this branch and one in this branch. Because of that, it makes it a lot easier to solve a problem like that if we use Kirchhoff's rules. And this is where the Kirchhoff's rules, the methodology, really shines. Trying to solve this problem not using Kirchhoff's rules would be a lot more difficult. So let's see how we would do that. Well, the first thing we'll want to do is use the first rule where we find a branch point. Let's take this point right here. We're going to add up all the currents entering the branch point and all the currents leaving the branch point and then set that equal to each other. So in this case, for the first equation, we can see that I1, which enters that branch point, equals I2 plus I3. Now it may be noted here with I2, notice I drew the direction of I2 downward, but in all probability, it may be the other direction. It may be that I2 will be actually in the opposite direction. But we don't care about that because whatever happens, if we then find the final value for I2 and that value is negative, that automatically implies that the current direction was in the opposite direction. So the number that we're going to get for I2 is going to be relative to its direction, the way it's drawn. If it's negative, it'll be in the opposite direction. That's my suspicion. Now let's find out if I was right. Well, we need two more equations. So for that, we need the two loop equations. So let's call this our loop one. And here our loop two. Notice I do indicate the direction that I'm going to take as I go around the loop, and that is very important. We're going to add up all the voltage rises and all the voltage drops around each of the two loops for the other two equations. So we'll have three equations and three unknowns, I1, I2, and I3, which is what we're looking for. So let's start at this point right here and go around loop one. So first of all, we have a voltage rise because this is the positive side of the battery. This is the negative side of the battery. So for equation two, we get eight volts. Then here we have a voltage drop that would be minus the current times the resistance. That would be minus four I1. Come around the corner here. Now notice we go from the positive to the negative end of the battery in that direction. So that's a voltage drop minus 12 and then we have another voltage drop across here that would be minus the current times the resistance that would be six times i2 and that adds up to zero as we come back to the same point if we go all the way around the loop all the voltage rises and drops add up to zero and for equation three we start at this point again but now we go around the loop this way so here since we go against the opposite direction of the current this will be a voltage rise so it'll be six I2, the resistance times the current. Here we have a voltage rise, plus 12 volts. Come around the corner, here we have a voltage drop. We go in the same direction as the current I3. So here we have minus 8 I3, and set that equal to zero. So there are the three equations and the three unknowns. What do we do, what do, we do next? Well, the next step will be to take our first equation and since it's already solved for I1, we're going to replace I1 in this equation and I1 in this equation, if there was one, with what I1 is equal to. Notice we only have to do it for one equation, for this I1 right there, because there's no I1 in this equation. So, the second equation, 2, now changes to 8 minus 4 times I1, but I1 is the same as I2 plus I3, like this. So we have minus 12 and minus 6i2 is equal to 0. And then if we combine all the i2s and all the i3s together, let's see here we have 8 minus 12, that would be minus 4. We have a minus 4i2 and a minus 6i2, that's a minus 10i2. And we have a minus 4i3, and that adds up to 0. So here you can see that my initial suspicion is probably correct. If all these terms are negative, how can we have that set equal to zero? Well, that means that probably I2 is a negative direction. In other words, I2 will be the opposite direction. We'll get a negative value for I2. So when we add these up, we should get, equal to, we should get something equal to zero. So I believe my suspicion is probably correct here. So now we have two equations. We have the third equation and the second equation. Notice that these two only have I2 and I3 in them. So now I have two equations and two unknowns. Let's come up here and continue with those. So equation number two, we'll have minus 10i2, and then we have minus 4i3, 
is equal to, when we bring the minus 4 across, it becomes plus 4. And then our third equation, here we have a plus 6i2, and we have a minus 8i3, and that is equal to, when we bring the 12 across the other side, we get a minus 12. All right, now I need to, again, eliminate one of the variables, and I can probably do that by multiplying the top equation by 2, both the left side and the right side, because then I'll get, ooh, let's see here, not a, by 2, how about a minus 2? Like this, that's better, because when I multiply this by minus 2, I get a plus 8i3. When I then add the equations together, i3 will be eliminated, and I only have one variable. So, doing that, we have minus 10 times a minus 2, that's a plus 20i2. Here we have a minus 4 times a minus 2, that's a plus 8i3 equals a 4 times a minus 2 is a minus 8. Now I'm going to add these two equations together. When I do, i3 will be eliminated. I now end up with just one equation. So here on the left, we get 26i2 plus 0 is equal to, that would be minus 20. And notice then that i2 will be equal to 20 minus 20 divided by 26, or i2 is equal to... 20 divided by 26, that gives us 0 0.769 for three decimal places. So a minus 0. Point, what did I say? 769. And of course that's in amps. So there's our first unknown, I2. Now I need to find the other two. Let's see here. How about if I take one of these equations? For example, this equation right here. Since I know I2, I can solve it for I3. So I'm going to take this equation here and write minus 10 times I2, which is now a minus 0 0.769, minus 4I3 is equal to 4. All right, so we just took this equation right here. And all we did was take i2 and replace it by what we just found to be i2. So multiplying this, well now we get a 7.69 minus 4i3 is equal to 4. And now when we bring this over to the other side, we get a minus 4i3 is equal to a 4 minus this. That would be minus 3.69. And so i3 is equal to uh, 3.69 divided by 4. So 3.69 divided by 4, the signs cancel out, so I get 0 0.923, 0 0.923 amps. So there's I3. Now I have I2, I have I3, now we'll go back to my first equation where I have I1 being the sum of the two. So finally I can say that I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. Let's see here, there we go. And so I1 is equal to, I2 would be a negative 0 0.769 amps, and plus I3, which is a positive 0 0.923 amps. And so together, I1 is equal to, subtract this from that, we get 3, 13 divided by minus 9, that gives me a 4, 11 minus 6, that gives me a 5, and 8 minus 7 gives me a 1, so 0 0.145 amps. Do a quick check, if I add this to that, I get 8, that's 11, 12, 23, that looks about right. So now, I have my three currents, I1, I2, and I3. Now notice, I1 has a positive value, which means that I drew the arrow in the correct direction. I1 will indeed, in this branch, go in that direction, we know the value of it. I2 is a negative value, a negative 0 0.769 amps, which means that in, in essence, there's a positive current flowing the upward direction of 0.769 amps. We don't have to change the arrow, we just simply mean by drawing the arrow this way, and the negative answer, it actually is in the opposite direction. And finally, I3 is a positive value. Notice that I1 and I2 come together and turn into I3 going around this branch, and it makes sense that this would be the sum of those two values, if you think this is a positive value, and add this to this, you would get I3. And that's how we use Kirchhoff's rules to solve a problem like that, where we have multiple sources and multiple loops. That's how it's done.